Thank you very much. I will be brief. Um, I'm going to talk about um, national cloud. And we heard earlier from Mr. Bonjanski about uh, the work that was going on in Slovakia around the delivery of the national cloud, which is very exciting. Um, very exciting to see the national cloud for municipalities also being delivered, which is uh, really, really exciting as well. And it's clear to see that Slovakia is very progressive in its delivery of cloud technologies into the public sector and its ambitions to deliver national cloud uh, are also very clear. Um, I'm going to talk about hybrid cloud. Now, um, the clouds that government are uh, using at the moment tend to be predominantly private clouds and the examples of Slovakia are clearly a private cloud. But we're also seeing public clouds being used more and more by certain governments. And public clouds are those large-scale clouds that are operated by the likes of Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. And um, what we're seeing more and more is governments now making that step towards using public clouds in certain instances, where they will use both the private cloud and the public cloud to get the benefits of both. Now, as Mr. Weber discussed uh, in his presentation on Cloud for Europe, there's very much a clear push towards adopting cloud technologies uh, by the EU. And there are a number of programs that they're driving and a number of initiatives. Uh, one of the initiatives my good friend and colleague Dan Sekovic will discuss uh, a bit later on when he talks about uh, standards and policy. But clearly, there is a very firm move towards cloud technologies at the national level. Um, it's clear, national cloud has lots of advantages. Obviously, there's the significant cost base reduction, the uh, re increased agility and the ability to launch services quickly, the ability to automate processes and drive down waste. But it's also about changing the culture of the way government delivers services. It's about delivering a service delivery mindset. It's about creating a service culture and meeting the needs of not only the government employees, but also citizens as well, and delivering the roadmap of services that appeals to both government employees and to citizens. And it goes one step further than that. It's about building national competitiveness. And it's about developing a really strong base of IT competence amongst your IT professionals. It's really pleasing to see Slovakia on this road and, and moving very quickly. Slovakia, you know, is in a global economy. You're competing against your neighbours, Czech Republic, Hungary. And I'm pleased to say that you're actually ahead of them on the cloud adoption curve. But, you know, there's some very serious points here that... Uh, Whilst you're trying to improve national competitiveness, you have to uh, maintain and meet the local and regulatory requirements of the country. And also, in certain instances, retain data, or very sensitive data that Mr. Weber touched on, in your own country. I'm going to give you an example of Ireland. Ireland is a very interesting country. When they in 2008, when they kicked off their national cloud, actually it was 2006, they wanted to build their own G Cloud, and they built a private cloud. They did it in partnership with Microsoft. In the background of the economic crisis, again, they found they were had a very strong roadmap of services they wanted to deliver, but they didn't have the funding and the finance in place to carry on scaling out and building a private cloud. So they decided that they needed to look at an alternative. So they started looking at the public cloud. They came and talked to Microsoft and we worked with them. They also talked to Amazon as well. But what was clear was they needed to look at a very flexible approach to how they manage their data needs. And a very similar process was undertaken in the UK where the government departments started looking at their users. And they undertook a project which was called uh, IL, Impact Level Management, 
which is actually looking at the types of users they have in government and public sector, and looking at the sensitivity of data that they use. They developed a methodology of five levels, where levels uh, one to three upwards were increasingly sensitive, so level one would have been very trivial, they would be junior people in government, they would be administrators, etc. Level two, uh, higher, and then to a point where level four or five would be classed as highly sensitive from a government perspective, level five from a national security perspective. So the government decided that they would start moving those users on IL1 and 2 into the public cloud and get the big savings and benefits they could. At the same time, making sure that they kept data that was very sensitive and very important and that of a national interest, clearly within the sovereign boundaries. Now, there is one thing to mention is that our data center in Ireland, for the public cloud, uh, the Microsoft Data Center is based in Dublin and also based in Amsterdam. So for the Irish government, moving data into the Microsoft Data Center wasn't so much of an onerous project. However, for the UK government it was. So they looked at this very seriously and we worked very closely with them to show them around our data center. We showed a lot of uh, our um, processes and procedures around how we manage data, how we look after privacy, security, etc., to give them comfort and peace of mind. And we're seeing them increasingly use it. So I talked earlier in the session with Mr. Boynanski about the Foreign and Colonial Office in, uh, sorry, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office in the United Kingdom, our Ministry of Foreign Affairs. They built their own private cloud, it's scaling up, and obviously for some of the more sensitive diplomatic information and data we have, that stays on the private cloud. But more and more for the administrative users, we're beginning to see the Foreign and Commonwealth Office now using the public cloud. One minute. Oh, I'm almost done, Peter. So, I'm finished, actually. Uh, but the point I wanted to make is that um, We've seen governments experiment and try things. And obviously the public cloud is a good starting, sorry, the private cloud is a very good starting point. But there's opportunities for you to drive agility, improve service delivery, and think about the public cloud. My colleague Dan Svekovic will talk about policies and standards and what's going on at the EU level to give you a bit more of a flavor. So if you have any questions, I'm available. I'd be delighted to take them. Thanks, Peter.